Welcome to The Transforming Word, a presentation of Word of Life Family Church, 95 State Docks Road, Eufaula, Alabama, 36027, with Pastor Hardy Bryant. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and to bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Welcome once again to the Transforming Word. Hi there, I'm Pastor Hardy Bryan, Pastor of Word of Life Family Church here in Ufala. It's Sunday morning in Ufala, it's time for the Word, time for Sunday morning service. Come on in with me and let's find you a good seat And uh, while we're waiting for the others to arrive. This is our sanctuary. Just pick out a seat. Choice is yours. And uh, stay with us for the transforming word. Praise God. We want to welcome our TV audience to uh, You Follow TV 97. We're here at Word of Life on a Sunday morning, and it's February 27th, 2015. We're glad you're joining us by way of TV. And uh, we just love the Lord in this place. In fact, let's go ahead and do a confession here uh, to start this thing off. And uh, say with me, this is the day is that the Lord has made. Lord has I choose I to rejoice, rejoice and to be glad in it. And, and not only that, but we are a family without tragedy. We are a family without sickness or disease. We are a family without lack or poverty. We are a family that lives the abundant life in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for my covenant with God through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Now, this morning, we want to uh, teach and spend a few minutes here talking about what does the Word say? Well, the Word says a lot of things about everything that we have to do with in this life. Amen? Amen. And uh, just to kind of get going here, we're gonna we're gonna just read the bulletin because it's fresh. What does the word say? Someone could ask about what, and I would reply about any subject that you want to think about. The word has something to say about everything that affects us. Amen. Amen. The word of God is the human instruction manual. God loves and cares about all of us enough Amen. to give us a thick book of instructions. It's called the Bible. And this book is to help us along through life. In fact, God's idea is not that we just struggle along, but that we walk in a place of prosperity and good success in every area of our lives. Amen. God's for you and not against you. Amen. You could pick any subject you want to pick and find answers in God's Word concerning that subject. When we consult our instruction manual, we find answers that saves us a lot of time and heartache. When you walk in light of the Word, folks, God just keeps you away from a lot of sorrows. Amen? Our redemption includes three main areas of our lives. It's uh, redemption from spiritual death, sickness and disease, lack and poverty. The first one, we are redeemed from spiritual death. That means that the one who accepts God's gift of salvation through the covenant purchased for us by the blood of Jesus then we can make certain that heaven is really our home for eternity. We are redeemed from sickness and disease. This means that by way of covenant, purchased for us by the stripes that Jesus bore just before the cross, He redeemed us from all sickness and disease. It is ours if we're born again and will believe it. See, a lot of born again people don't believe that, so they don't have that. A lot of people don't open their mouth about their personal testimony. 
And so they don't overcome. Because Revelation 12, 11 says, they, they, the believers, overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Amen. We need to make much of the blood. At the time when the world, the religious world, and various theologians and so forth are trying to stop references to the blood of Jesus as being holy blood, as being a cleansing blood, we need to intensify. We just need to double up on talking about the blood of the Lamb. We sang that song. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh, He is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Why? Because of our sin. God had to establish. God needed to establish and He wanted to establish. He desired to establish a covenant with His man. Even though His man had sinned, He wanted to establish a covenant so that could be renewed. Because a covenant is a covenant between two parties. God offers the covenant, but it must be accepted by the hearer. Yes, amen. See, I was in the insurance business for a long, long time. I trained sales and sell insurance. I was in sales management for over 30 years. There has to be an order for a contract to come into existence. There has to be an offer, and there has to be an acceptance. Our covenant with God is the same way. God has offered us a covenant of peace, joy, health, riches, wealth, and happiness. But we have to take some action and accept the covenant, the offer that God has made. We have to embrace it and get excited about the fact that He even offered it to us. And then when we accept it, it is confirmed. And we enter into that. Now this covenant that God has offered is not a short-term contract. It's not a contract that God will break. It is an eternal covenant. Amen. It's like this ring on my finger. That's a symbol of the covenant with the woman that God gave me. Which we're coming up on almost 49 years of marriage. And I asked her this morning as we backed out of the driveway. I said, honey, I said, why do you think we've been able to stay together for almost 49 years? And she said, love. I said, what about the times when everything wasn't so lovely? <laughs> and she laughed. She said, covenant. I said, that's exactly right. Marriage is not a bed of roses. There are times when you have disagreements. Hopefully you don't ever get into a place where you start fighting one another physically, but a marriage is a thing that has to be worked out. It's not a 50-50 agreement. It's a 100-100. Both parties having to give 100% to make it work. Divorce is 50-50. Marriage is 100-100. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. You say, now you quit preaching and started marrying. No, no. A covenant means that both parties are absolutely committed for this thing to last and never be broken. That's what covenant is. God has made covenant with us and it's an everlasting covenant. Yes. Everlasting. We can depend on God. No matter. I mean, just like I pointed out earlier about the uh, covenant that God made with Adam. As soon as he had pronounced the curse, he turned right around in the 21st verse of that chapter 3 and uh, uh, covered them and clothed them with animal skins. Well, he had to kill the animal and the blood had to be shed in order for that to be established. So he created a covenant with Adam. And then right after that, even though he had made covenant with him, he drove him out of the garden, not for punishment, but for the love of Adam, lest he eat of the tree of, of life and live forever in that, that, that bad state. Yeah. But he was still in covenant. Covenant doesn't mean that everybody does everything exactly right. But it means that when covenant is established, he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. He's a loving God. He's a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. Amen. Oh, but you know, I might do something wrong. You will do something wrong. But you have to say, because of the blood, the blood is more powerful than the stain of that guilt. Amen. Say it with me. The blood, the blood is, more is more powerful than the stain of that guilt. 
See, if it wasn't, then the blood couldn't cleanse it. But it continually, over in 1 John, it says that the blood of Jesus continually cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We have to have faith in the power that's in the blood. There is power in the blood. Wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we got to have faith in that. Faith in that. Say the blood, of, the blood of Jesus is more powerful than sin's power. In fact, His blood has redeemed us from all sin. Past, present, and future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are redeemed from sickness and disease. This means that by way of covenant, Everybody say covenant. Purchased for us by the stripes that Jesus bore just before the cross, redeemed us from all sickness and disease. It is ours if we are born again and believe it. Amen. The problem is a lot of Christians don't believe that and they're sick. Well, there again, it's a provision of the covenant. If, if he offers you a covenant free from sickness and disease. And you say, well, I don't know whether that's true or not. I don't know. And you don't come into agreement with it. You haven't accepted the offer. Say, I must accept. I must accept. The, offer the offer of the covenant of healing. The, the covenant of health. And, and believe that what God has offered me He's absolutely able to perform it. So therefore, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. Going somewhere trying to get healed. No, I'm the healed of the Lord. And the enemy is trying to take my help. But I have power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. So I'm free from sickness and disease. By way of covenant. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory to God. Yes, praise We're redeemed from lack and poverty. This means that God has made covenant with us that guarantees our success and prosperity. If we believe that the covenant is real and that we ratify it with the words of our mouth. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's wrong to have anything, you know. Uh, the Lord wants us to be poor, so we'll stay humble. I, I know some people that don't have much that are full of pride. Mm -hmm. They're not humble people. Really, the, 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 the meaning of meekness, which is a, a form of humbleness, is power under control. Power under control. Now, God wants us to be humble, yes. Look into Him, the author and finish of our faith. Jesus is the author and the finish of our faith. But He does not want us to be somebody's doormat either. Amen. Especially Satan's. Amen. Whom He has already whipped in the dark region of hell and rose triumphant over hell, death, and the grave, triumphing over Satan and all of his so-called ability to keep him from arising from the dead. Amen. Amen. Think about it. If Jesus could die for our sin, pay the penalty for our sin, yes. go to hell itself, yes. and be uh, uh, down in that region where Satan thought that he had him, and all the imps of hell thought that they had him, had him, and was laughing in hellish glee while Jesus was paying the fullness of the price for our sin. Until the Supreme Court Justice of the Universe, the Father Himself, said, It's enough. Yes. The penalty for all sin has been paid. Holy Spirit, go get my son. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Holy Spirit said, I'm just waiting to get the command. He went down there and quickened him, made him alive. Yeah. See, Jesus died not only physically, but he died spiritually. Because the Bible says that, that, that he tasted death. Yeah. 
That Hebrew word is, 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 is a word that means plural, deaths. There's only two deaths that I know about, and that is physical death and spiritual death. He suffered spiritual death, but whenever the Holy Spirit went down there, whenever that had been paid, why? Why, why did he have to do that, Brother Hardy? Because the Bible says in Romans 3, uh, actually in Romans 6, 23, it says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life to Christ Jesus, our Savior. So what does that say to you? It says, we have sinned, Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all of us have sinned, and so once sin has been committed, there has to be a penalty paid for it. People who are not saved are going to have to pay the penalty themselves. But for those of us that have received the forgiveness that Jesus has provided through us, through him personally going and paying our sin debt in full. He paid our debt in full. Amen? Amen. <coughs> There's a little song that goes, He owed a, we owed a debt we could not pay. He paid a debt he did not owe. Christ Jesus has paid our sin debt in full. There's an old, old hymn that we used to sing. An old account was settled long ago. If you've ever had a past due account and you finally got enough money to go in there and pay it off, the lingo and the language of that is the account was settled. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, we had an account and it was a sin debt that we could never pay, but it was on the ledger. But thank God, hallelujah, thank God, Jesus went in there with his own blood and paid that debt and the account was settled. We don't owe anything anymore. Amen. We're saved. <coughs> Our account has been settled. We didn't pay it, but Jesus paid it for us. Amen. Can you say yeah. thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Amen? Thank you, you got to believe that. you got to believe that. you got to believe that there's power in the blood. you got to believe that the atoning blood had power enough to redeem us from all of our sins. And God's not mad at us. He loves us. And He's trying in a million different ways to get His goodness across to us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Thank you. So we're redeemed from life and poverty. Over in uh, Psalms 112, verse 3, it says that uh, the good man, the just man, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Well, that's God's Word. Everybody say the Word, the Bible, is God speaking to me. So he spoke that to me. Yes. Now I, I, I can look at my circumstances and believe my circumstances and say, well, that verse can't be true because I'm sure not rich. And we can speak words out of our natural mind according to what our bank account says. Or we can get over into the realm of the Spirit and have the mind of Christ because he's given us two minds. And born again believers, we have two minds. We have the natural man, which operates totally according to the circumstances. What we see naturally, what we hear in all those five senses. Or we can believe what the Word says, which is in the spiritual realm, and we can have the mind of Christ. Now the Bible says, if any two shall agree as such, it, you can agree with the circumstances and continue to have the same circumstances over and over and over. Or you can come into agreement with God's Word and begin to confess God's Word. See, it's important. It, it, in fact, it's critical that you absolutely believe what God's Word says is so true until you begin to speak what the Word says rather than what the circumstances are. That's right. Praise God. We don't need to be too quick to voice what the natural circumstances are. Well, you got this bill coming up and you don't have money in the bank. Your check register says there's not enough money. It's screaming. There's not enough money in the account to pay that bill this year. Need I remind you over in 1 Kings 
chapter 17, there was a widow woman there. She only had a little handful of meal. It was screaming. It's not enough to sustain us. But it is enough for me and the lad to go and pick up two sticks and build a little fire and bake a little cake and eat it and then die. Boy, that is absolutely under and consumed by the circumstances. When God had already told her, because it says back in the second verse of that chapter, when he told Elijah to get away from the brook that was drying up, the ravens had quit coming, bringing food. He said, go down to Zarephath, a little woman that I have commanded to sustain thee. Rather than remembering the word of God, which would have been remembering that God's word is higher than any natural circumstance. Yeah. Oh, I can't get this crop to you enough. Say this to me. God's word God's is full of power. It's, full of power. it's, higher, it's higher than any than natural any circumstance. Natural circumstance. But it has to be released. Yeah, it has to be released in faith. You've got to believe it. And you've got to speak it out. The Word of God's got to be in your heart and it's got to be in your mouth. Amen. And if you won't speak it out, you'll just go without. That's all. You'll go without. you got to speak it out. you got to confess that you have a covenant with God through the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. you got to thank God that Jesus has saved you, redeemed you, and forgiven all your sins. Walk them clean. That God, through Jesus, has given you a new life. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Now the life that I live, I don't live yes. by myself. I live it by the faith of the Son of God. Yeah. And we've got to be conscious of the fact that God indwells us and absolutely causes us to do what we couldn't do in the natural. We've got to come to expect the provisions of the supernatural in our life because God is a supernatural God. The Word of God is a supernatural Word. Yes. Jesus supernaturally rose from the dead. Jesus supernaturally fed the multitude with a little boy's lunch. Jesus supernaturally turned the water into wine. Jesus walked on water supernaturally. Yeah, we serve a supernatural God who is full of victory. And not only does not even know the word defeat. And we're His children. And over in Ephesians 5 it says, Be ye imitators of God as dear little children. Well, Harden, when you, Brother Harden, when you walk on water, I have it yet. But if, if God says for me to, I'll walk on the water, I'll cross Lake Eufaula and never get wet except the soles of my shoes. <coughs> we don't need to limit God. He's an unlimited God. Yes. Amen. And I see Christians all the time limiting God. They think God is no more than a label and a name on a church roll. But I'm telling you, He's so much more than that. Amen. Amen. We need to fully be persuaded. Paul said, I am fully persuaded that he's able to keep that that I commit to him. Yeah. In other words, we need to have an active faith in God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You getting anything out of this? Amen. God set up his kingdom based upon a word system. Everybody say word system. Word system. See, and it's the devil's business to try to keep your words quiet. He'll work overtime to try to keep you from speaking for the Word of God. See, right now, in this dispossession that we're in, God needs us to speak forth His Word. Yeah. He's counting on us to take His Word that is full of power and speak it forth so it gets into this realm. A lot of believers don't know that, don't choose to believe that. Don't choose to take the persecution and the mockery and, the, and all of the scoffing that comes with it. But people say, do you really believe that? I was talking to a man a few years ago and I was sharing this. He said, Brother Hart, do you really believe that? I said, of course I believe that. That's what the Word says. I wouldn't be telling you that that's what I believe unless that's what I believe. Oh, but you know, like... Try to minimize it, try to make it small. Listen, whenever I had the mass in my right lung in 1981, 
Their doctors confirmed and the x-rays and the tomograms and all of that confirmed that it was there. The CAT scan revealed it was there. Jackson Hospital didn't have a way to do a CAT scan in 1981. They sent me over to St. Margaret's in Montgomery. And, and to, to do a CAT scan to prove that it was there. It was there. But the Word of God in my mouth, after my sister brought me that book, and I got a hold of Isaiah 53, 5, that says, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His strife, I am healed. And I realized that if the Word of God says I'm healed, then regardless of the circumstances, what it looks like or what it feels like, then I'm healed. And when I took that position within 24 hours, God gave me physical movement in my chest, let me know He took that mess out of there. And the next week it was confirmed by the doctors, the very doctor, the internal medicine doctor, and the surgeon that was going to do the surgery confirmed that it was no longer there. They said it was there and now it's not. Hallelujah! Praise God! That's the power of God's spoken word if it's believed in the heart. Yes. Praise God. So the blood of Jesus. So He sent His word and He healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. He sure did me. Psalm 103.20 There are three elements to this. One, the Word came. We know that Jesus is the Word He came to this earth. Amen. Number two, we have to believe the Word. Amen. Not just token expression, we have to believe it with every fiber in our being. And then number three, we have to ha make it operative in our lives by speaking exactly what the Word says. Four, we have to do it or, in, or walk in the light of it every day. Do it means that you take the Word, take the Word of God, like you would a recipe for a good chocolate layer cake. You take that, and the next time the recipe calls for something, you look at the recipe, and then you do it. And then you look at the recipe for the next step, and you do it. And you look for the next, and you do it. That's why we need to take the Word. The Word says, do this, do it. Do this, do it. Do this, do it. And when you, when you make that cake according to the recipe, you'll finish up with a nice cake that you can't hardly wait to get cool so you can put the knife to it and enjoy it. That's the way God has created covenant with us. Take my instruction manual, take my recipe, and read it and do it. Yes. Read it and do it. Yes. Read it and do it and then enjoy the abundant life that I have given you, I, that I made available to you at no small price. I made it available at the price of the precious blood of Jesus. Now, let's, let's get into some words real quick here. I want you to go with me to 1 Peter chapter 1. And for a few minutes, we're going to look at the Word, what the Word says. Because you can't get better than the Word. Amen. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. Say amen when you get there. Amen. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, such as silver and gold, from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers. Verse 19, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Then it says, down here in verse 23, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. It's saying, and Jesus said of Himself, He said, No man can go to the Father except He come by Me. In other words, Jesus knew that the blood that was in His body was holy blood. Yes. He knew that that blood that was going to flow from His veins would be the, the, the source of the redemptive power that He had brought to the earth 
that would save the whole world. By the Holy Ghost, John the Baptist, baptizing people in the River Jordan, looked up and saw Jesus coming, and he made a declaration. He made a prophetic word. He said, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the whole world. Now how can Jesus take away the sin of the whole world? By becoming the blood sacrifice that was powerful enough to redeem a man from all of his sins. We saw earlier in, in, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, where as soon as the curse had been pronounced upon Adam and Eve, in verse 21, he covered Adam and Eve. They were covered in fig leaves. He took the fig leaves off and he gave them coats of skin. And in order to get the skin, the animal had to lose its life. That was the establishing of the covenant of God with Adam. And then the next thing he did was he drove him out of the garden. Not because he was punishing them, but because he loved them. He did not want them to eat of that forbidden tree. A tree of life. God wants every man, every woman, every boy, every girl saved. Yes. He does not want yes. people unsaved. He wants them saved. And that's why Jesus came. Yes. Jesus came to seek out and to save that which was lost. I want to, I want to read something here very quickly. Praise God, I can find it. In the uh, book, The Blood Covenant by E.W. Kenyon, it says that uh, Stanley was a missionary that went to Africa and he saw the tribes over there and, and almost all the primitive tribes of the world have practiced some sort of blood covenant with one another. They, they will slit a vein, cause it to bleed. They'll drip it in a glass of wine, each one of them, and one will drink half of it and the other will drink half. And then they'll put their wounds together and they have cut covenant. And the covenant in those tribes is sacred. I mean, I mean, they'd rather die than to break the covenant. And he talks about the sacredness of the blood covenant. He says, Mr. Stanley said he never knew this covenant would be broken in Africa. Now we've got to remember that God created covenant with us through the blood of Jesus. And we need to count it as a sacred thing. Because God does. Mr. Stanley said he never knew this covenant would be broken in Africa, no matter what the provocation. In other words, once it was established, no matter what they did, they would not break the covenant. Dr. Livingstone also bears witness said that he never knew it to be broken. In other parts of the world, it is claimed that they never knew the blood covenant to be broken. It is one covenant that is perfectly sacred among all primitive peoples. I tell you, that's the reason why missionaries can go over with the good news of the gospel and preach the gospel of the blood covenant yeah. and the people in third world countries where they have already been practicing a blood covenant, yeah. they embrace it, receive it, and believe it, and miracles take place by the multitudes because they gain an understanding and a faith in the covenant process, the table of the Lord. Yes. In Africa, if one was to break the covenant, his own mother or wife or his nearest relatives would seek his death and turn him over to the hands of the avengers for destruction. No man can live in Africa who breaks the covenant. He curses the very ground he walks on. The vilest enemies become trusted friends as soon as the covenant is cut. I mean, they can be mortal enemies, but they cut that covenant, and now they die for one another. It is so sacred, no man takes advantage of the covenant or breaks it. 
It is so sacred that the children to the third and fourth generation revere it and keep it. In other words, it is a perpetual covenant. Indissolvable. A covenant that cannot be annulled. A covenant that cannot be annulled. Praise God. I've got one other. Praise God. Blessings of the covenant. As blood covenant people must be kept in fellowship with the blood covenant obligation and privileges and the blessing. God was under obligation to shield them from the armies of the nations that surrounded them because of covenant. God was under obligation to see that their land brought forth large crops. Now you say, because of the covenant. Everybody together, because of the covenant. God was under obligation by the covenant to see that the herds and flocks multiplied. Because of the covenant. The hand of God was upon them in blessing. Because of the they became the head of the nations and of wealth. Because because of the covenant. Jerusalem became the richest city the world had ever known. Because their hillsides were irrigated. Their valleys teemed with wealth. Because there was no city like it. There was no city like it. Because of the no nation like it. Because of the God was their God. They were God's covenant people. Yeah. Under the covenant, one man could chase a thousand in war and two could put ten thousand to flight. In David's day, when covenant truth became a living force in the nation, David had blood covenant warriors that could individually slay 800 men in a single combat. They could, without weapons, rend a lion as though it had been a kid. Because of the covenant. They had physical strength and prowess. They had divine protection that made them the greatest warriors the world ever knew. Because of the covenant. They were God's peculiar people. They were the treasure of the heart of God. Because of the covenant. Come on, folks. Let's not be passive about this. Let's be enthusiastic and excited. God has given us his covenant. Amen. And it's an everlasting covenant. It will never end. All we got to do is ratify it. Amen. Praise God. There's one other area I wanted, if I can find it real quick. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. In Exodus 2, when God heard the groanings of Israel in Egypt, he said that he remembered his covenant that he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God sent Moses down to Egypt to deliver Abraham's blood covenant descendants. God couldn't break the covenant. His word says in Psalms 89, 34, My covenant will I not break, neither will I alter the word that's gone out of my lips. He could not forget it. He could not ignore it. He is a covenant-keeping God. Amen. He's a covenant-keeping God. Amen. What he promised, he is certain to perform. Back behind Israel was this solemn covenant that God had sealed on his side by putting himself in utter, absolute bondage to the covenant. God put himself under bondage to the covenant. Yes, yes, Amen. yes. When he created covenant, he swore by himself because there was none higher to swear by. Amen. God and Israel were bound together. A lot of people say, why is God, why do we say that Israel is God's people? Well, it's because of an everlasting covenant. Right. Everybody say everlasting covenant. Everlasting oh, if we could just get a hold of this thing about everlasting covenant. Yeah. That an everlasting covenant is one that's never going to be broken. Amen. As long as Israel kept the covenant, there were no sick people among the Israelites. Amen. No sickness. That's the old covenant. we got a new covenant. Yeah. Based on better promises. Yeah. Guaranteed by the blood of Jesus. As long as... When he said, I am Jehovah, that he did thee, that settled it. Yeah. 
Jehovah was their only physician. He was not, he was not only their physician, but he was their succor. He was their protector. Excuse me. Yes. There was never a barren wife. No babies ever died. No young men and women ever died unless they broke the covenant. Mm. As long as they kept the covenant, there were not allied armies enough in the world to conquer one little village. Because when you're in covenant and you have faith in that covenant, God is the one they've got to overcome. Amen. Oh, yeah. They couldn't even promise, they couldn't even overtake one little village. Because God was the one they were fighting against. Amen. Now get this. In battle, no soldiers were slain. None. None. They were blood covenant men. Moses led them out of Egypt into a barren desert, comparable to our own Mojave Desert. And on the realm of the covenant, God supplied them with water for themselves and their cattle and manna for the people. And I might add, it was the old covenant. Yeah. We've got a new covenant yeah. based on better promises. Amen. Guaranteed by the blood of Jesus. When they came out of Egypt, it was the signs and wonders that staggered the whole world at the time and had been the wonder and amazement of the world ever since because no country had ever been brought out like that. It was a supernatural thing brought about by God. And it was because of? The God preserved them as a nation because they were His covenant people. When they sinned and broke the covenant, they were carried away into captivity and into Babylon. Yep. They had sinned against the covenant. They had brought judgment upon themselves. Mm. And I want to say this. Because our country for many years has been drifting southward, deeper and deeper and deeper and further and further away from God, America has, been, has become a covenant-breaking country. A covenant breaking nation. Yes. And if we don't turn around and return to God, yep. TV audience, this goes for everybody I'm speaking to and everybody here. It's everybody's responsibility and duty to turn around and return to the God that this nation was founded upon. Yes. And repent and let the nation be healed in Jesus' name. Jesus. A covenant God will honor His covenant, yes. but it has yes. to be ratified, it has to be accepted by the people in order for it to be in full force. Yes. Now, under covenant, we're more than conquerors. Yes. Outside that covenant, we're defeated. But in God, hallelujah. Oh, they've even tried to take in God we trust off of our money. Trying to erase the even memory of God. It says, we don't want to be in covenant with you anymore. We want to do it our way. Oh. But God says, as long as you're in covenant with me, I'll be your protector. Hallelujah. I'll be your healer. I'll be your provider. I'll be your deliverer. I'll be everything that you need me to be because I am that I am. Yes. I'm the great God on that. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you get anything out of this? Yes. Wish we had more time, but we're out of time. Praise, Praise God. God. TV audience, write us, call us, text us, do something to let us know that you're watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just we have some books that we'd like to send to you. A book uh, and, and other books maybe. It just just write us, let us know that you watch the program and that you enjoy it and want to uh, want to know more about us, and we'll be glad to provide that. Thank you for tuning in. Let's let's do our confession at the close here. We are a family without tragedy, a covenant family, the covenant family of God, a family without sickness or disease, a family without life and poverty, a family that lives the abundant life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have been viewing the Transforming Word, a presentation of Word of Life Family Church, 95 State Docks Road, Eufaula, Alabama, 36027, with Pastor Artie Bryan. Now, if you would like to reach him by email, address it to H-A-R-D-Y-B-R-Y-A-N at ufala.rr.com That address again H-A-R-D-Y B-R-Y-A-N at ufala.rr.com You can address a normal letter to Word of Life Family Church 
P.O. Box 411. Well, the Word says a lot of things about everything that we have to do with in this life. Amen? Amen. And uh, just to kind of get going here, we're going we're gonna to just read the bulletin because it's fresh. What does the Word say? Someone could ask about what? And I would reply, about any subject that you want to think about. The Word has something to say about everything that affects us. Amen? The Word of God is the human instruction manual. God loves and cares about all of us enough to give us a thick book of instructions. It's called the Bible. And this book is to help us along through life. In fact, God's idea is not that we just struggle along, but that we walk in a place of prosperity and good success in every area of our lives. Amen. God's for you and not against you. Amen. You could pick any subject you want to pick and find answers in God's Word concerning that subject. When we consult our instruction manual, we find answers that saves us a lot of time and heartache. When you walk in light of the Word, folks, God just keeps you away from a lot of sorrows. Amen? Our redemption includes three main areas of our lives. It's uh, redemption from spiritual death, sickness and disease, life and poverty. The first one, we are redeemed from spiritual death. That means that the one who accepts God's gift of salvation through the covenant purchased for us by the blood of Jesus, then we can make certain that heaven is really our home for eternity. We are redeemed from sickness and disease. This means that by way of covenant purchased for us by the stripes that Jesus bore just before the cross, He redeemed us from all sickness and disease. It is ours if we're born again and will believe it. See, a lot of born-again people don't believe that, so they don't have that. Okay. A lot of people don't open their mouth about their personal testimony. And so they don't overcome. Because Revelation 12, 11 says, they, they, the believers, overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Amen. We need to make much of the blood. At the time when the world the religious world and various theologians and so forth are trying to stop references to the blood of Jesus as being holy blood, as being a cleansing blood. We need to intensify. We just need to double up on talking about the blood of the Lamb. We sang that song. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh, He is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Why? Because of our sin. God had to establish. God needed to establish and He wanted to establish he desired to establish a covenant with his man. Even though his man had sinned, he wanted to establish a covenant so that could be renewed. Because a covenant is a covenant between two parties. Yeah. Yes. God offers the covenant, but it must be accepted by the hearer. Yeah, See, I was in the insurance business for a long, long time. I trained salesmen to sell insurance. I was in sales management for over 30 years. There has to be, in order for a contract to come into existence, there has to be an offer and there has to be an acceptance. Our covenant with God is the same way. God has offered us a covenant of peace, joy, health, riches, wealth, and happiness. But we have to take some action and accept the covenant, the offer that God has made. We have to embrace it. And get excited about the fact that He even offered it to us. And then when we accept it, it is confirmed. And we enter into that. Now this covenant that God has offered is not a short-term contract. It's not a contract that God will break. It is an eternal covenant. It's like this ring on my finger. That's a symbol of the covenant with the woman that God gave me. Which we're coming up on almost 49 years of marriage. And I asked her this morning as we backed out of the driveway. I said, honey, I said, why do you think we've been able to stay together for almost 49 years? And she said, love. I said, what about the times when everything wasn't so lovely? <laughs> and she laughed. She said, covenant. I said, that's exactly right. Marriage is not a bed of roses. There are times when you have disagreements. 
Hopefully you don't ever get into a place where you start fighting one another physically, but a marriage is a thing that has to be worked out. It's not a 50-50 agreement. It's a 100-100. Both parties having to give 100% to make it work. Divorce is 50-50. Marriage is 100-100. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. You say, now you quit preaching and started marrying. No, no. A covenant means that both parties are absolutely committed for this thing to last and never be broken. Amen. That's what covenant is. God has made covenant with us and it's an everlasting covenant. Yes. Everlasting. We can depend on God. No matter. I mean, just like I pointed out earlier about the uh, covenant that God made with Adam. As soon as he had pronounced the curse, he turned right around in the 21st verse of that chapter 3 and uh, uh, covered them and clothed them with animal skins. Well, he had to kill the animal and the blood had to be shed in order for that to be established. So he created a covenant with Adam. And then right after that, even though he had made covenant with him, he drove him out of the garden, not for punishment, but for the love of Adam, lest he eat of the tree of, of life and live forever in that, that, that bad state. Yeah. But he was still in covenant. Covenant doesn't mean that everybody does everything exactly right. But it means that when covenant is established, he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you. Yeah. Praise God. He's a loving God. He's a forgiving God. He's a merciful God. Amen. Oh, but you know, I might do something wrong. You will do something wrong. But you have to say, because of the blood, the blood is more powerful than the stain of that guilt. Amen. Say it with me. The blood, the blood is more powerful, is more powerful than, the than the stain of that guilt. See, if it wasn't, then the blood couldn't cleanse it. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it continually, over in 1 John, it says that the blood of Jesus continually cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We have to have faith in the power that's in the blood. There is power in the blood. Amen. Wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise and we got to have faith in that. Faith in that. Say the blood, the blood of Jesus blood is, more powerful, is more powerful than sin's power. Sin. <laughs> in fact, His blood, His blood. Has, redeemed has redeemed us from all sin. Past, present, and future. Past, present, and Hallelujah. Future. Hallelujah. Amen. We are redeemed from sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. This means that by way of covenant, everybody say covenant. covenant, purchased for us by the stripes that Jesus bore just before the cross, redeemed us from all sickness and disease. It is ours if we are born again and believe it. Amen. The problem is a lot of Christians don't believe that. And they're sick. Well, there again. It's a provision of the covenant. If, if he offers you a covenant free from sickness and disease, and you say, well, I don't know whether that's true or not. I don't know. And you don't come into agreement with it. You haven't accepted the offer. Say, so I must accept. The offer of the covenant of healing. The covenant of health. And believe, and believe that what God has offered me, He's absolutely able to perform. So therefore, I'm not sick. Going somewhere trying to get healed. No, I'm the healed of the Lord. And the enemy is trying to take my health. But I have power. Over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt me. So I'm free from sickness and disease. By way of covenant. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're redeemed from lack and poverty. This means that God has made covenant with us. That guarantees our success and prosperity. If we believe that the covenant is real and that we ratify it with the words of our mouth. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, 
it's wrong to have anything, you know. Uh, the Lord wants us to be poor, so we'll stay humble. I, I know some people that don't have much that are full of pride. They're not humble people. Really, the, 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 the meaning of meekness, which is a, a form of humbleness, is power under control. Power under control. Now, God wants us to be humble, yes. Look into Him, the author and finish of our faith. Jesus is the author and the finish of our faith. But He does not want us to be somebody's doormat either. Amen. Especially Satan's. Amen. Whom He has already whipped in the dark region of hell and rose triumphant over hell, death, and the grave, triumphing over Satan and all of his so-called ability to keep him from arising from the dead. Amen. Amen. Think about it. If Jesus could die for our sin, pay the penalty for our sin, yes. go to hell itself, yes. and be uh, uh, down in that region where Satan thought that he had him, and all the imps of hell thought that they had him, had him and was laughing in hellish glee while Jesus was paying the fullness of the price for our sin. Until the supreme court justice of the universe, the Father Himself said, "It's enough. Yes. The penalty for all sin has been paid." Holy Spirit, go get my son. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Holy Spirit said, "I'm just waiting to get the command." He went down there and quickened him, made him alive. Yeah. See, Jesus died not only physically, but he died spiritually. Because the Bible says that, that, that he tasted death. Yeah. That Hebrew word is, 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 is a word that means plural, death. There's only two deaths that I know about, and that is physical death and spiritual death. He suffered spiritual death, but whenever the Holy Spirit went down there, whenever that had been paid, why? Why, why did he have to do that, Brother Hart? Because the Bible says in Romans 3, uh, actually in Romans 6, 23, it says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Hi there. I'm Pastor Hardy Bryan, Pastor of Word of Life Family Church here in Eufaula. It's Sunday morning in Eufaula. It's time for the Word. Time for Sunday morning service. You're invited to watch the Transforming Word with Pastor Hardy Bryan every Sunday at 7 p.m., and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Transforming Word on Ufala TV every week on Sunday and Wednesday night.